Well, in its 17 years of independence, Ukraine has grown from the old Soviet-style collective farms to mammoth farming operations, more like what you'd see here in the U.S., Canada, or Brazil. But unfortunately, many Ukrainian farm workers have a poor work ethic. Generations of communist rule and mindset are hard to break. There are also archaic laws that prohibit land sales. But as the Frontier Study Tour group discovered, if Ukraine can get past those barriers, the potential is huge. While making the transition from Soviet rule to an independent country, Ukraine has had its share of challenges. At this 900 cow dairy, the staff veterinarian says a communist mindset is tough to break. I think uh, the most uh, difficult thing it was, uh, as we called, is a, a human factor. That human factor, Misha says, is the constant struggle farm managers have with their employees. Getting people to work and the work ethic of the, um, of the uh, people that they do hire. And uh, I think that's going to be uh, continue to be a, a main obstacle for them. The Soviet Union did this country a great disservice by kind of destroying their work ethic. And there simply isn't good people coming up to replace the ones they have. And working on the collective farms, I don't think they've had any motivation to try to, to um, they, haven't, they don't understand the profit motive, the capitalist uh, theory that the harder you work, the more you should make. While Ukraine farm workers might not understand the finer points of capitalism, the Americans on this trip sure do. They have the world knocking at their door to, to, to buy land, to, to bring technology, to bring investment. So the land is the only thing they have, but without investment, it is nothing. Part of that investment includes the fertile soil, but right now it's off limits to foreign investors. Even Ukrainians can't sell their land to a local farmer who may want to buy it. The massive farms seen on this tour are cobbled together through hundreds of leased properties. Well, if you own 10 acres, which is about the average size of ownership, uh, would be 10, uh, 10 hectares maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, you, you would not be allowed to sell that ground if you owned that 10 hectares. You have to do what everybody else in that uh, collective farm that currently owns the former collective farm would want to do. The Ukraine parliament is considering changes in the law that may open the door to foreign ownership. I would expect that if it does go in the favor of foreign ownership, land values here will, uh, will rise significantly. However, with widespread corruption in that government, there is no assurance that the leases would even be honored in court. Kerry Hubers grew up on an Illinois farm. He's now an attorney in Washington, D.C. He sees some risk for foreign investment. And with the political turn, uh, turmoil, aside from the mindset, is um, whether any laws will remain in place or whether they'll be reversed. And if there's a public outcry, it could be that um, land deals that you thought were solid and were good get overturned via legislation. Ukrainian agriculture appears to hold big potential, both for domestic and foreign investment. But some of these farmers feel it will take the passage of time before it would become an economic threat to U.S. agriculture. And when the next generation that comes through, the generation that is maybe 25 and under, when they start running things, that's when you'll start to see this country blossom. Well, you'll have more good people to find with each passing year, but I think it's going to take a generation, probably two, and that means like 40, 50 years. The tour group saw risk and opportunity and some significant challenges to overcome, but they also say they developed a new appreciation for what farmers have in this country.